Hey guys, it's John from C3 Mods. Just a quick video to show you how to convert an aftermarket switchblade key fob to your current car. I, I got two Hondas and I bought aftermarket switchblades key fobs for the Element and uh, I transferred the guts from the original uh, transmitter into the new switchblade key fob. But the RF uh, transponder that deactivates the theft immobilizer system is in the head of the key. So uh, stay with me and I'll show you how to do that really quick. Okay, here's what we got here. This was the original key fob and it uh, was an option when I bought the car. We bought it new and we opted for the remote entry, uh, remote door locks. It came with this. The guts are already in here and the RF uh, indicator, the transponder is in the head of this. So even though I have already switched the guts out and I got the key cut, the lock and the unlock buttons function fine. You can see the red light light up, but it won't start the car. It'll crank the car, but it won't start the car. And I'll show you how to convert that. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the new switchblade key fob taken apart. <clears throat> this is the back side, the battery goes in there. This is your key on a spring with the button. This is the guts out of my original key fob and uh, I replaced the buttons out of it. Uh, the key fob comes with its own buttons, but I just put the Honda ones back in there. And this is your uh, lanyard piece on the end. If you look right here, there's a slot, and that is where the transponder goes. It looks like a cylinder when you take it out of the head of the key. This is the original Honda key that I cut open with a razor knife, and this clear plastic piece here houses the transponder. And uh, this is the one that I've already pulled out of and put into the new key fob. And uh, I'll show you how to go about that here in just a minute. Okay, so we have the key in the vise here. And you can actually take a razor knife and cut these two ends off. And then I'm gonna cut right along the top of this seam here. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So here you can see where I've cut the back loop of the key off. And there's the back portion of the key, the metal portion right there. So I'm going to cut along top along that seam and I'm going to pry it apart. Okay, so here you can see I've, I've cut the bottom off. I slid it across the top, pried it apart with a screwdriver, and then slid it off the key here. And this is your transponder right in there. Okay, well, as you can see, I pulled the transponder out of the slot and there's a groove right here and it goes right in there like this. So that places it in the proper position of the ignition lock cylinder to recognize uh, that it's the right key and disable the immobilizer. Now, the problem is on the back side of this, there's nothing to hold it in place. So I got some foam and I cut a little block of foam for the other one and I put it right down here, and when I put it back together, everything works perfect. Okay, so we got the key fobs together. This is the new switchblade key fob. You may or may not have to reprogram it to your car. If you do, it's a simple step. You put the key in, turn it to two so the ignition's on, push either lock or unlock, let it go, turn it off. Turn it back, ignition on, press the button again, Turn it off. Turn it on again. Press the button again. That's three times. Turn it off. Turn it back on the fourth time. Press the button. I don't know if you heard that, but the locks just worked. So now we have lock. And unlock. And it starts the car. So there you go. Pretty easy. I hope that uh, answers any of your questions on how to get these aftermarket key fobs to work. Questions? Just let me know. Thanks.